afternoon. Welcome to St. Cecilia's Parish and thank you for joining us this weekend. Today we observe the Solemnity of Most Holy Trinity. The readings from today's Mass may be found in the Missalette on page 144. Please be respectful to the Lord in our midst and those around you by turning off your cell phones and placing it in a vibration mode so that it is not distraction to others. Thank you for your consideration. The intention for our Mass this afternoon is for Dennis Albert. Please stand and greet the Lord who gathers in our midst as he makes us one as members of the body. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and that way prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, God. and to you, my brothers and sisters. That I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, and what I have done and what I have failed to do, my fault, my fault, my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we glory, we glorify you. Thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, Lord God Almighty Father. Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, you are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. You alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High. Let us pray. God our Father, 
by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth. Ask from one end of the sky to the other. Did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, with strong hand and outstretched arm, and by the great terrors, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? This is why you must know now and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on the earth below and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children after you may prosper, and that you may have long life on the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. the people the Lord has chosen as his own blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his own upright is the word of the Lord and all his works are trustworthy he loves justice and right of the kindness of the Lord the earth is full blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his own by the word of the Lord the heavens were made by the breath of his mouth all their host for he spoke and it was made he commanded and it stood forth blessed the people the of the Lord upon those who fear him, upon those who hope for his kindness, to deliver them from death, and preserve them in spite of famine. Blessed the people, the Lord has chosen as his own. Our soul waits for the Lord, who is our help and our shield. May the kindness of the Lord be upon us, who have 
gonna put our hope in you. Blessed the people the Lord has chosen as his own. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to your Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. It's you, Lord Jesus Christ. You may have heard before the old joke among the clergy, at least, that on Trinity Sunday, the preacher is allowed at least one heresy. Heresy, of course, is a bad thing, but we deal with the mystery of the Trinity. It's so far beyond us and so difficult that the joke is, well, if you say something wrong, it's forgivable. So if I say something wrong, you must forgive me. We talk about the, uh, in church about the mysteries. We began by saying, in order to prepare ourselves to celebrate, the mysteries we call to mind our sins. 
we are going to talk about the mystery of the Eucharist at the consecration. Mystery in church, of course, doesn't refer to a detective story. Detective stories are very good. I like them myself. But in church, mystery is not a detective story. It's something that is so far beyond us that although we believe in it, hope in it, and love it, we can't really figure it out. Now, when it comes to the mystery of the Trinity, that is the colossal mystery. How are we going to relate to God? You know, most human beings believe in God, at least in a vague, general sort of way. And Christians agree with Muslims and Jews that there can only be one God. We won't have to bother with the atheists because their position basically is that existence just happened. There's no reason it just happened. So we don't take them seriously. Among those who believe in God, though, Christians are different from Muslims and Jews because we all believe in one God, but Christians are let into the mystery of what God is in his inner life, so to speak. God is not solitary. He's not the great alone. God is more like family. Think about that. God is more like family. There's a line in one of the New Testament readings somewhere or other where it talks about God is a source of fatherhood or family. We worship God, a God who is personal. You know, it was Christians who had to develop the notion of a person. And even human persons are very mysterious. You know, we see their bodies, we listen to their words, we may touch them or something, but deep down the person, it's a mystery. We're even mysteries to ourselves sometimes. We can't even figure ourselves out. So Christians de develop the notion that person and nature are distinct. The person is the one who has the nature. The person is who. The nature is what. So we as human beings, they generally coincide. One person has one nature in God. It's very, very mysterious because we say that the divinity, one what, is enjoyed by three persons, three who, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's interesting, at least to me, that you know we're told in the scriptures that we human beings are made in the image and likeness of God. There are various interpretations of that, but we're made in the image and likeness of God, and that's why, perhaps, personal relationships are the most important things to us. As long as we're not starving or freezing to death or boiling in the heat, what do we care most about? Personal relationships. Who loves me? Who hates me? That's what's most important. It's also interesting that we develop as persons by relating to other persons. You know, it's funny that little children, when they're learning to talk, one of the first words that they really come back with frequently is no. They're just beginning to talk and they already know no, N-O. Because what they're saying kind of is that to their parent or their caregiver, whoever, I am not you and you are not me. We're different. We're different. But the way they develop is by relating to other persons. That's the way we grow. Some people we relate to easily, others with difficulty. Some we like, some we dislike. Maybe that's why we're made in the image and likeness of God, because God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. It's hard for us to deal with that. But it's wonderful to deal with because we don't look upon God just as a big power, you know, the force, like in the first Star Wars movie, may the force be with you. Well, God is powerful, no doubt about it. But he's also our father. The readings today mention that we are adopted children. You can say you to God. 
That really is an astonishing statement because God is omnipotent. He is the Almighty. He is the force. He is the power. But still our Father. We can, we can speak to him. He listens to our prayers. God sends the Son into the world to illustrate the Father for us. We have that in St. John's Gospel. Jesus says, Philip, if you see me, you see the Father. They're so like each other and yet not the same. The Father is not the Son, the Son is not the Spirit, and all of that. We are privileged as Christians to believe that. It's a gift of God. The Jews and the Muslims, like some of the philosophers, concluded that there is a God, a supreme being. But Christians know what God is really like. God really cares. You can say to God, you. God hears your thoughts. The Son, Jesus says, is illustrating the Father for us. The Holy Spirit is sent to us so that we can pray right. It's a very, very mysterious approach to God, and yet think about it. Even human persons are hard to figure out. All the more is God difficult to figure out, but once you can believe that God is that way, it's, it's, it's wonderful, it's loving, it's kind. He cares about you, you can relate to him. You can speak to him, listen to his word. That's the mystery of Christianity, to recognize God not just as creator, not just as supreme being, but as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And that in the Son, God makes us adopted children. Jesus is Son by nature, we are children by adoption. Stand for the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, unsubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, down from heaven. For the sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit. Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the fathers. I believe in one I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. I look forward to Amen. Marked by the Holy Spirit as children of God, call to our Father, Abba, with our needs and the needs of our sisters and brothers. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Holy Catholic Church, that we may proclaim the good news in word and action, making disciples of all nations. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of our country that they may lead this nation to embrace justice, kindness, and generosity for the benefit of all its people, especially those most vulnerable to injustice, to intolerance, and to economic exploitation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
and pray for those who have died defending our country, that they and their families may find comfort in God's loving arms and that the sacrifice they made will never be forgotten. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray that society come to a deeper understanding and respect for the human person who was created, redeemed, and made holy by the gracious action of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our Father Andre Garapi, for Josephine Boschman, and for all those who have died recently. And at this Mass, we pray for the repose of the soul of Dennis Albert. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray also for all of our own personal intentions, which we reveal now in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Triune God, your goodness and love sustain us through our hardships and bring joy to our lives. Look upon us in our needs with your goodness and love. We ask all this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Father Almighty. Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. 
Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created, rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving his holy living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Cecilia and all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope and Robert our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O oh merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ, our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and may we not be Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And those of your spirit, let us offer one another a sign of Christ.
As you've noticed, the wearing of the mask now is optional. For those who prefer it, I will wear a mask. You're welcome to come up without yours because I'm not worried about it. So we'll go that way. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Oh, oh, oh. 
said I am the truth If you follow close to me You will know me in your heart And my word will set you free Jesus said, I am the life, far from woman no thing can grow, but receive this living bread, and my spirit you shall Stand and pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity. The Memorial Day services will be head, held at the St. Cecilia Cemetery this Monday morning at 9 a.m. Please join us to honor the brave men and women in uniform who served our nation, many of whom made the ultimate sacrifice in doing so. The church will be open, but the rectory offices will also be closed on Monday in observance of the Memorial Day holiday. Lord be with you. With Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Dreaming.